He just made another world team. Um, yep. Didn't get to wrestle today, and I know you like to wrestle. So talk about what you thought when you heard about it. Uh, you know, it's it sucks. You know, it's nice, but it sucks at the same time. Cut a good bit of weight last night, and then uh, to do all that and not get to wrestle. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, but uh, you know, I'm on another team. I'm getting another chance to to bring home a medal for Team USA, and it's a great honor. Can't complain. Now, um, you feel strong at this weight. I mean, clearly you didn't come down uh, not to go and do some damage at Worlds. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think um, I think this is a weight. I've I feel like the past few years I've always been like the smaller guy at the weight. This is the first time where I'm I'm gonna be more of a weight guy, a big guy that that's gonna be coming down and and tough to move around. So I'm excited, and uh, I just came back from Sweden. I was in Paris. I've been. Uh, over in Norway, and I've been bouncing around a lot, getting a lot of international experience. So I think for this world, unlike others, I'm coming in with uh, a lot of repetitions with those guys. So I'm excited, and I, I really do feel confident at the weight. Is that what it's going to take for U.S. to do well at the world, so that you got that inter international experience? Yeah, you know, I feel like we're so used to wrestling these guys, and you know, we got some great wrestlers in America. We got some really good Greco-Roman wrestlers, but. We, we don't get that repetition. It's completely different to wrestling here in America. And uh, if we don't get that experience, we're never going to find the success. So, you know, I'm doing this on my own. I, I hop on a plane. I don't tell nobody. You know, I book a flight and I just go over there and I got a bunch of friends um, in all these different countries now and I stay with them and I train with them and I learn from the same guys they're learning from. So I'm starting to even the playing field with them, I believe. And uh, I, they know my name. And I feel like in the past I've been coming to brackets and they see my name and they're like, oh, I don't know this guy. I'm going to run him over. Well, now they see my name in the bracket and they're like, you know, I've wrestled this guy. He's going to be tough. I need to bring my A game. I'm not just going to run him over. And I think having that mental edge is going to really, it's going to elevate me and it's going to it's going to make them wrestle a little different. You know how hungry USA Wrestling is for Greco to do something yes, after, after the last yes, Olympics. Sir. Are you trying to be that man? Yeah, you know, I, I tell my coaches and my family, like, I think I'm the chosen one and you know I may not have had that success at Olympic trials and you know I fall short and I feel like I'm just keep falling short and I'm not making that that step up where I want to be but I believe inside like I the reason I'm here is is to make it happen for us and uh, you know everyone's gonna talk and they're gonna talk their smack about Greco and whatever you know it's <laughs> It's, it's different, you know, I'm wrestling the Michael Jordan of Azerbaijan and I'm wrestling these great guys from Kyrgyzstan. They don't even have a freestyle team. These guys have been wrestling Greco their whole lives. They don't, they don't know the difference in, in Kyrgyzstan. They don't know the, the freestyle over there in, in Denmark. They don't have men's, it's just Greco. So Greco overseas is a lot bigger than, than freestyle. So the guys we're wrestling are tough. And I don't think people understand that here. Is it more about life, lifestyle than sport? It is. It definitely is. It definitely is. It's, it's, it's just so, it's so hard to explain. I could sit here and talk about it all day, but it is about the lifestyle and it, it's about the grind. And it's coming and I know it's taking time and you know, you guys might not see it yet, but it is coming. Well, you also put on a show when you wrestle. We talked about that after the semis, and I know yep. you wanted to go out there in the semis and entertain the, the fans here and everybody yep. watching. So uh, just talk about how important that is for the sport, too, and, and why you go out there and, and make a point of, uh, of doing cool stuff that people like because to Because I feel like a lot of people, they might not be a Greco fan because they see a one-to-one -one match. They see a, a two-to-one or a two-zero match because it's very hard to score. You only have the top part of the body. You don't have the rest of the body to find scores in that. It makes it hard. So when I go out there, I want them to see the possibilities of the sport. I want them to see like, wow, this is super technical and there are a lot of different things you can do. It's not as much about the show as it's about teaching people about the sport. And I think I do a great job and I, I try and be a strong ambassador for it. Who's helped you the most in this country? Man, there's a few, but definitely uh, probably Lucas Stelton and Andy Bezik. You know, Lucas is probably most technically sound coach, I think, and I mean, Andy Bezik, there's nobody that has the experience like Andy does. He's a multiple Olympian, world bronze medalist, another bronze medalist. He's wrestled the best guys in the world. He's been taught by some of the greatest guys in the world. So I think uh, those two have really, really elevated me. Yeah. Can't wait to see you get back on the mat Thank again. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys are a huge part of this. Thank